the Spirit of the Lord. So we are going to permit him to show him the blood of Jesus. That the Lord will take him. The Lord, everything that comes down from past level, the Lord is giving him that power. He's giving him that strength. He's giving him that, uh, that wisdom. We are going to listen to the throne of God. Let us pray for the people in our past level. Thank you so much for this powerful prayer. Good evening, uh, Saints of Mansion and Fellowship Church. Um, Good evening, sir. Elder Sman Kagbo was supposed to teach us tonight, but he's on working vacation in Africa. So we are so blessed in Mansion Fellowship Church that um, we don't have vacuum, and, and God has been so 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 gracious to us that um, we, he never leave he never leave any vacuum. In, in in his ministry so so we thank god uh if you remember last uh, wednesday we talked a lot about uh, all the things that um, eventually happened during the easter season the reason why we celebrated easter who were we celebrating during the easter and uh, funny enough this is, this is something that we are we, are, we have been talking about in first peter Right, right from um, verse 1. And if you remember, last Wednesday, we talked about the, the salvation that uh, even the old prophets, including the angels, they, they were expecting it to come, but when it was going to come, they, they didn't know. Uh, and then we finished um, last Wednesday in, in uh, uh, verse 12. But verse 13 now says, um, <coughs> Therefore, that is as a follow-up. So we're going to start tonight. We're going to go back again to verse 9. And then, then, then we can see how the, the, the writer of, the, the, of this episode has been building up his argument before he comes to verse 13. So can we just have a small prayer? Father, I thank you, O Lord, for giving us this opportunity to come before your eternal grace tonight. I thank you, O oh Lord, Father Almighty, for using me as an instrument of communication to your children. Father, I beseech you, O oh Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, O oh Lord, to anoint 
your message this evening, Holy Father Almighty. Anoint my tongue, O oh Lord. Father, speak through me. I beseech thee, O Lord, Father Almighty, <clears throat> to let every word that is going to be sown tonight find Father grounds in our heart, O Lord, Father Almighty. We beseech thee, O Lord, to consecrate all the hearts that will be joining us tonight and all the hearts that will be hearing this good news, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. We thank you, O Lord, for giving us this revelation. We thank you, O Lord, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, O Lord, for making yourself a sacrificial lamb for the remission of our sin. Father, we thank you, O Lord, for all your brethren. We thank you, O Lord, for all the saints that gathered tonight, O Lord. In the name of your Son, O Lord, we beseech thee, O Lord, to touch the hearts of those at home. We beseech thee, O Lord, to continue to give us the zeal, to give us the passion, to give us, O Lord, the, the ability to be able to build relationship with you. Thank you, Father, for the gift of salvation. Thank you, Father, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. At the end of this session, Father, let all of us have every cause to glorify your holy name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, Father, we pray. Amen. Amen. So as I was saying, as I was saying, a lot of questions were asked about salvation. What, what, what is salvation? Why, why, why do we need salvation? Can salvation, can, can we have uh, can we go to heaven with our salvation? Why was salvation so important? And that is what the writer was saying. So I'm going to read again verse 9 from the New Living uh, Bible, which, 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 which explains it further to us. It, it says in verse 9, it said, the, the reward for trusting him. Or, okay, let me, let, me, let me take it from verse 8. Verse 8 says, you love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. Apostle Peter was writing to the Jews, he was writing to the to the to the Christian believers that were being persecuted, that were scattered all over the Asia Minor. Apostle Peter saw Jesus Christ, Apostle Peter knew Jesus Christ. But all those perse persecuted Christians because at the time Apostle Peter was writing this epistle, it was almost about 40 years after, after the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So he was not writing to the people that witnessed this, the, 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 the three years of Jesus Christ. Because after Jesus Christ was, was um, um, crucified, the disciples, all of them, they, they, they became scared. And, and after the after the the, the, the uh, stoning to death of the first martyr, which is uh, uh, Apostle Stephen, everybody scattered to Antioch, to Corinth, like, uh, to Corinth, to uh, everywhere, and they all scattered to Damascus. <clears throat> because if you remember that that was the time that, um, and the son of Tatos uh, got uh, uh, permission from the from the elder that let me go to Damascus to go and bring back all these uh, Christians that are pro uh, professing the name of Jesus Christ. So they all scattered all over the place. So, so that it was only after 40 years after Jesus Christ has ascended to heaven that this epistle was being written. So, so, the apostle, so, so Apostle Peter was writing to the people that heard about Jesus Christ preached to them, but they didn't physically see Jesus Christ. But they heard about it from their parents, they heard about it from their pastors, they heard about it from their people. So, so, so in that verse 8, it said, you, you love him even though you have never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with a glorious, inexplicable joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. The reward for trusting him we be the salvation of your soul. How do they interpret that one? What, 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 what does it mean by the salvation of my soul? You see, this salvation was something. He, and then he, he, he went on in verse 10. He said, this salvation was something. Even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. The prophet, they prophesied it 400 years before that salvation came. They wanted to see it too, but they, they, they had the opportunity to see it. And they wondered what time or, or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when they, he told them in advance about Christ's suffering and his great glory, glory afterward. 
they wondered. They wonder what what when when is when, because because if you remember again, the the what I, 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 Prophet Isaiah wrote in, in Isaiah fifty three. Everything that happened during the Easter was written by by, by Prophet Isaiah almost four hundred years before the event took place last last week when we were celebrating Easter. They say he was being led to the to the to the slaughter without opening his mouth. Yes, Jesus Christ didn't open his mouth. He was tried. Even Pontius Pilate said, "Can't you defend yourself?" He said he was beaten, was chastised. He said the strap on his skin was a healing power for us. In other words, Pontius Pilate beat him, and then they crucified him. So all these prophets, they saw, they saw, they saw all this. Everything came. Pass so that the scriptures might be fulfilled. But they longed to see it, but they couldn't see it. So in, in, in verse 12, it said, They were told that their messages were not for themselves, but for you and me. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preach in the in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. So it is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Even the angels were eager to, to see it happen. They were waiting anxiously for it to happen. And when it really happened, the angels were the first to roll away the stone, if you remember. And the angels were the first to, to, to speak to Mary. They said, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He said, he has already told you that he's going to, wake, uh, he's going to be resurrected and he's going to wait for you. In Galilee. So, so, so the angels were there, and, and even <clears throat> when, when Peter and the rest came, they, they found an angel one sitting in, 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 uh, at the defeat, and then one sitting, uh, sitting at, the, at, at, at his head. But they just saw the destroyed the, the shroud, but the body was not there. So, so the angels too were eagerly awaiting this resurrection. So, so this, so this, so, so this is what Apostle Paul, I mean Apostle Peter, told these people, told the Jews, told the Christian, uh, uh, um, uh, persecuted Christians all over, all over Asia Minor, that they should continue to endure. They should continue to be hopeful for that salvation that to come. So, so, so it was then, which he followed up from verse start from verse thirteen, which we are starting today. Before he said, therefore, after 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 what I've already said in verse one to verse uh, twelve, he said, therefore, therefore, prepare your mind for action and exercise self control. So I'm reading now. I'm going to read first <clears throat> the King James version in verse in verse thirteen to seven to to twenty one. And let us hear. He said, therefore, guard up your loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things, like silver or gold, from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So, 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 so the writer of, of um, um, New, New Living 
translation is a be prepare is a so prepare your mind in other words a guide a guide that is guide guide your loin he said prepare your minds for action and exercise self control put all your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world so so what are they talking about wherefore guide up your loins of your mind what do you mean by loins if you remember again Loin is something like in, in, in our own modern days, we have belt. We use belt to hold our pants. We use belt to tie to tie our gown, our garment. But in those days, they don't they don't have belt. They have loins. So loins are that that kind of a long long uh, uh, um, uh, cloth that that uh, that if you remember. Uh, 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 prophet Elijah, Elisha told uh, uh, Elisha, Elijah told Elisha, if you see, then carry me away, then you will get your request because uh, Prophet Elisha said, give me double power, give me double of your power. And Prophet Elijah said, it, it is not for me to give you, but if you can see, then when they take me away, and what did the Prophet Elisha do? He grabbed the, 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 the garment of uh, Prophet uh, Elijah and the loins that is his bed that is the, the, the cloth that he used to hold his garment pull he, he pull it uh, 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 off of off his garment so 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 that so that, that was what he got and if you remember he just when, when he got to the river where he was going to cross the, the river he tied it together beat the, the the water the water split into two so so those are those, that what, that's what we call loin. He said we have for guide up the loins of your mind. So instead of loins of your garment, he said loins of your mind. So it's being used metaphorically now, and that is verse thirteen. As if he has said, we are for since you are are so honoured and distinguished as above, guide up the loins of your mind. You have a journey to go. You have a race to run. You have a, a warfare to accomplish and you have a great work to do as the travelers, the racer and the warrior and the laborer gather in and guard up their long and loose garment. If you are going to run a race, you roll up your sleeves. If you are going to run, if you are going to, to be a carpenter or a, a, a bricklayer, you don't go there with your agbada, with your big garment or anything. You don't go there with your buban. You, you have to, to to, to, to retire your your, your 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 garment and everything so, so, so that uh, your your loose uh, garment will not be caught up in the engine and that's why you wear apron that's why you wear uniform uh, 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 on the production of floor because you don't want accident for for your flowing garment or your 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 headgear to get tied up in the in the rolling machine so you tie your loin so that is what he says say, guard up <clears throat> they are long and loose garment that they may be more ready or prompt you see and expedient in their business so that so that you you do by so 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 do you by your minds by your inner man and by your affection seated there guide them control your mind control your thoughts gather them in let them not hang loose and neglected about you Restrain their extravagances and let the loins or the strength and the vigor of your mind be exerted in your duty. Disengage yourself from all that will hinder you and go on resolutely in your obedience. Be sober. That's what he's saying. He said, Be sober. What do you mean by that? He said, Be sober. That means be vigilant against all your spiritual dangers and your enemies. And be temperate and be modest in eating, in drinking, in your apparel, in your recreation, in your business, and in the whole of your behavior. So, so be sober means that be sober does not mean that that you, should, you, 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 you must look sad or you must look or disengage yourself from anything. No, but you, you can be sober in everything. That is, be temperate in everything. The way you what you, you used to drink before. Some people used to drink alcohol before I used to drink beer, but I don't drink beer anymore. But when I see other people drinking beer, I, I don't I don't blame them because it is not yet their time to find out whether 
they, 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 should, they, they should drop the habit or not. I don't see there's anything wrong in it. There are some, the, the, what, you, what you eat, there are sometimes, because if you remember again, what you eat, people may ask questions. That as Christians, are we forbidden from eating any particular type of food or particular part of meat? We've already discussed that before. We say that it is not what you eat that corrupts you, but what comes out of your mouth. But even then, Apostle, Apostle James, when, when, when this Jerusalem Council was formed about, about, about the, the Gentiles, when, when, when some, some zealot, uh, over, over zealous Jews, we are saying that, that before the Gentiles could be admitted into the commonwealth of Jesus Christ, they have to be circumcised. They have to be like us, to be like the Jews. So it was then that the Apostle, Peter, Apostle James now said, no, that they don't have to be, the, it, it, it is the circumcision of the heart we are talking about now. Not this, not not, not the, the the physical circumcision did not save you, because if the, if the physical circumcision saves you, they will not have crucified Jesus Christ. They will have recognized Jesus Christ as the Messiah, because all the people that crucified Jesus Christ were all circumcised. They were all Jews, but it is the circumcision of the heart, the cleansing of the heart, the generation, the reformation of the heart. So, so it said, it said the, the Gentiles don't have the, the Gentiles don't have to be circumcised, but they must abstain from animals that were strangled, animals that were offered to idols, or even blood. So, as Christians too, to to be a, to, to live a sober life, you must not eat any any strangled animal. You must not eat any animal offered to idol, when you know fully well that this animal is is offered to idol. Even if you eat it accidentally, without, being, without it being disclosed to you, you may say, okay, I didn't know. But when you know that this is offered to idol, you must not eat it. So that's what he's saying. And then in our apparel, apparel is, this is another very interesting thing. Apparel. What do you mean by apparel? How do you dress? What are your, what, what are your dress code? When, when you are coming to church, you have to remember that if, if you can dress properly to your office, if you can dress properly to an interview where you are going to meet fellow human beings who may not even be believers, but you know that when you are going to court to testify or when you are going to an interview, you put on your tie, you put on your shoe, you, you shine everything and everything, you look well. But when you are now coming to church now, you just pick up any 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 jacket or anything. You just put it on. You look like a ruffian. You don't care because who's going to judge me? Or a or a, a woman. You come to church with a mini skirt. You come to church. So so that is apparel. That is that is the way you present yourself before God. You see, the, the pastor may not say anything. Or the 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 the, the congregation may the congregation definitely will look at you. They will look at you. That, oh, what is wrong with this person? How, do, what do, how does she dress like this, or how does he dress like this? So that, so that, so that one thing is the conscience is there for us. The way you dress to your office, the way you dress to bank, the way you dress to court, the way you dress to meet people, because you need their help. It should not, should not. Then, then we are not coming to God to enter God's sanctuary. How do you want to dress? So that is what he's now saying, your apparel. Then your, your, your recreation. Your recreation, how do you spend your spare time? How do you spend your hobby? How do you spend your, 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 <clears throat> your free time? You go to club, you mix with sinners, or you go to this, you, you, I do gossip or whatever. So your, your recreation is also very, very important. The moment you become born again, you must never engage in I do gossiping. You must never engage in wasting time on I do things. There are so many things to do. So we are so preoccupied. But don't 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 let your, your recreation reflect glorifying God. How you can benefit. I'm not saying that you must read the Bible 24-7. No. 
And I must say, and I'm not saying that you must talk about Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ 24 7. No. But your recreation is also very important. And then your business. Your business should be, be God like in your business, be Christ like in your business, and then in the whole of your behavior. So be super minded also in your opinion, as well as in practice and humble in your judgment of yourself, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So after you have tried your best to do all these things, you hope for the grace that will be coming when Jesus Christ is revealed to you. It's not saying, it's not saying at the second coming of Jesus Christ, no. Because none of us will be alive when Jesus Christ comes. We will be dead, but we are going to rise again. But at the revelation of Jesus, when Jesus Christ is made known to your life, when Jesus Christ is revealed into your life, <coughs> that's what he's saying here. So, 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 that, so some refer this to the last judgment as if the apostle directed their hope to the final revelation of Jesus Christ, which I don't think so. But it seems more natural to take it as it might be rendered. Hope perfectly, he said, he said hope perfectly or thoroughly for the grace that is brought to you. Or by the revelation of Jesus Christ, that is by the gospel, which brings life and immortality to light. Hope for perfectly. Hope perfectly. Trust without doubting to that grace which is now offered to you by the gospel. What do we learn from here? One, you see, the main work of a Christian lies in the right management of his heart and, and his mind. The apostle's first direction is to guard up the loins of the mind. Your mind. As we were saying before, if you remember the armor, the, 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 the uh, armor of uh, armor of God, your mind is where the Satan Satan first attack, because that is where that is where the, 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 the thought of your core emotion is. So 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 that you have to guard against you. You have to tie your loin, the loins of your mind. Two, the best Christians have need to be exhorted to sobriety. These excellent Christians are put in mind of it. It is required of a bishop. In other words, how do you become sober? And, and sobriety, that is the, 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 the act of being sober, is so emphasized, especially in all the previous things that we have studied in titles, in all these things. If you remember, what, what, the, what the, quali the qualifications of a bishop, qualifications of an elder, qualifications of deacon and deaconesses. One of them is, one is said, <clears throat> in Timothy 3, 2, he said, they have to be sober. And then of aged men, in Titus 2, 2, they have to be sober. And then also, he, 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 for, for women, he said, the young women are to be taught it, and the young men are directed to be sober-minded. So it cut across ages. It doesn't say older men alone. It doesn't say bishop alone. It doesn't say pastor alone. Got to be sober. Both the young women, both the young men, both the aged, both the older people, both the bishop. Bishop means elders, pastors, uh, ministers. We have to be sober-minded. So and that's what, that, if you remember, that's what we learn in Titus. <coughs> so a Christian work is not over as soon as he has got into a state of grace. No. He must see hope and strive for more grace. When he has entered the, the straight gates, he must still walk in the narrow way and guard up the lens of his mind for that purpose. So, which means that the race is, the race is not over at all. Because if you remember again, Jesus Christ said that even, he said even the narrow gate, he said we will have to struggle to enter the narrow gate. He said wide are the gate. That leads to hell, but a lot of people will strive, we will, will, will stroll into it. For he says, he says you, you should strive to enter through the narrow gates. Even you have to struggle to enter the narrow gates. So, so these are parables, these are uh, 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 um, 
um, my paradox that people have to really meditate upon how can I struggle to enter to, to narrow gate. And when I when I enter the straight gate, I see how to pass through the narrow gate again. So number four, I say a strong and perfect trust in God's grace is very consistent with our best endeavor in our duty. We must hope perfectly and yet guide up our loins and address ourselves vigorously to the work we have to do, encouraging ourselves from the grace of Jesus Christ. So we must continue to encourage ourselves. We must continue to encourage ourselves. So, so to break it down, before we ask questions, on that, <coughs> on, 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 on that is said, to guard up the loins of your mind is to, to get rid of loose and slobby thinking, which is idle gossiping. To bring the rational and reflective power of your mind under control. It means to control what you think about those things you decide to set your mind upon. This is this is something that, that happens to all of us, isn't it? Because some people all day they may be thinking, 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 thinking. They be wondering. You, 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 they, they can don't. They don't even know what they are thinking about. And they spend the whole day thinking, thinking. Their their minds going from from from. From, from America to Africa to Africa to South America to they are just just wandering out aimlessly thoughtlessly. So he said you have to bring it under control. He said be sober. He said sober denotes a condition free from every form of mental and spiritual loss of self control. It is an attitude of self discipline that avoids the extremes. Be sober as we have already explained. And there are so many ways in which you can be sober. Then they say, rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Peter has told us a lot about God's grace. He greeted us with grace as we read in 1 Peter 1 2. He told us of the grace that came to us in Jesus, predicted by the prophet of old. As he also told us in 1 Peter 1 10. Now he goes further writing of the grace that is to be brought to you when Jesus Christ comes back. The only way we will be able to stand before Jesus on that day is because of the unmerited favor he gives and we give to us, which is grace, unmerited favor. Grace isn't just for the past, when we first gave our life to Jesus Christ. It isn't only for the present, where we live each moment standing in His grace, as we read in Romans 5 2. It is also for the future when grace will be brought to us. God has only just begun to show us the riches of His grace. Grace is the unmerited love of God, stooping to save and bless, the source of all those bright and holy gifts which come from His infinite heart. So, so that's verse 13. <coughs> Do we have any question for, from verse 13? Is it, is, it, is it difficult to be sober? No. I don't think so myself. But how, how can somebody be, be, become sober? Be, because one thing, it, it's... Uh, I, I wouldn't say, I, I, was, I, wouldn't say I, I was reckless, but when I was young, I I was I was a very um, uh, what, what, what language can I use? I, I I was very adventurous. So so I like to I, I like to experiment. I like to experience all kinds of life. So I joined so many clubs. I joined so many so many so many something I cannot even mention. And I participated in all the activities because I wanted to know. I was I was so curious. But, it, but eventually, I gave, I gave up everything. So, so, so it, 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 what, what Apostle Peter is saying here, is it referring to us in our adult age? Or, or, or do you think or the, the, the people the, like uh, the young adults also can, be, can live a sober life without any problem? Yeah. Um, well, thank you so much for expanding on, um, on, these, on these verses. You covered quite a lot of areas here. Yeah. And um, just going back to your question, and when you started 
Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for that explanation. So, Apostle Peter went further in that uh, verse 14. He said, <clears throat> he said that, um, so you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desire. You didn't know any better then. Like, um, <clears throat> our senior pastor explained to us, but now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God who chose you is holy. For the scripture says, you must be holy because I am holy. You must be holy because I am holy. I've had so many pastors, especially reciting this, this scripture, be holy because I'm holy. But how many people really understand what, what Apostle Peter was trying to tell us here that, that this is what God said? You see, as obedient children, these words, these words may be taken as a rule of holy living, which is both positive. But you ought to live as obedient children, as those whom God had adopted into his family and regenerated by his grace. Regenerated by his grace, as, as the senior pastor said, regenerated by grace, that is only by grace we are admitted. You see, so you must not fashion yourself according to the former laws, according to your wisdom in your ignorance, 
or the words may be taken as an argument to press them to holiness from the constitution of what they are now, children of obedience. And what they were when <clears throat> they live in loss and ignorance. So what do we learn from here? He said, one, the children of God ought to prove themselves to be such by their obedience to God, by their present constant universal obedience. In other words, it, it, it is something that has to be, uh, 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 you have to be constant in it. It's not something that, it's, it, it's something that you, you, it, you have to develop the attitude to be sober, I mean, to, to be obedient. So that, that so that's what he's saying here. And then, then number two, he said the best of God's children have had their times of loss and ignorance. Like I said, I had my own. But the time has been when the whole scheme of their lives, their way, and their fashion was to accommodate and gratify their unlawful desires and vicious appetites, being grossly ignorant of God and themselves. Yes. You can't blame anybody. We all have our own past. So that is what Apostle Peter is acknowledging here. <clears throat> we, did, <clears throat> we did it in ignorance. Then number three says, persons when converted, when converted, differ exceedingly from what they were formerly. They are people of another fashion and manner from what they were before. Their inward frame, behavior, speech, and conversation are much altered from what they are in the past. The way they talk, some people cannot talk without swearing. It took, it took, it took me time before they, they took swearing, swearing from my mouth. Because when I'm driving a car and somebody crosses me, I swear, piam! When somebody do anything, I, I swear, piam! But it took time before, before, before when, when it was embarrassing for me, I had to stop it. So, so, so you can stop any habit. You can stop any habit. So then number four, the loss and extravagance of sinners are both the fruits and the signs of their ignorance. So, 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 so that what we are now saying is that if you see anybody, you, 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 I don't say you, 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 you must not be, be judgmental or you must never build a profile of somebody because, because, because of his manner, mannerism and everything. But because you, you have to think as a Christian, mature Christian, that he has not reached his own time of maturity spiritually. So when, when he has his own personal encounter with Jesus Christ through grace, he will change. All those things we we we, we he, he, they, they are they are his old garments and he will share them like the blind Matthews when Jesus Christ was passing through the, the, the street of Jericho. And then they, they, they ask him, Okay, stop your mind. He said, I'm not going to stop my mind. Jesus, son of David, have mercy for me. They say, Okay, he's calling you. What did he do? He shared his old garment. All the garment that was that, that was stopping from uh, from, from rushing, ru rush, ru running to Jesus, he shared them. So so the day you became a born again Christian, you have to shed all those. Which the general Vasya once said, I, I think he said buckets, your buckets. He said we 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 all, we all have different different things under our buckets. So so you drop those buckets because you, because they they, they become they, they, it, it's like you, you have lead tied to, to 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 your ankle of your leg and you want to run a race. They will still be pulling you down. So you have to, to drop everything, no matter how attractive, no matter how 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 beautiful or or or, or um, I don't know, so precious to you. That's nothing that is precious to you. That is anything that is going to hinder you from from the, from, from from salvation, from from approaching the throne of grace. It's not. It's it, it, they are all worldly things that you have to shed before you can move forward. So, be holy in all manner of conversation. Who is sufficient for this? Who is sufficient for this? And here it is required in strong terms and enforced by three reasons taken from the grace of God in calling us from His command. It is written. And from His example, it says, Be holy for I am holy. So what we learn, one is, one, the grace of God in calling a sinner is a powerful engagement to holiness. The grace of God in calling a sinner is a powerful engagement to holiness. It is a great favor to be called 
effectually by divine grace out of a state of sin and misery into the possession of all the blessings of the new covenant. And great favor are strong obligations they enable as well as oblige to be holy. Two, complete holiness is the desire and duty of every Christian. Here is a twofold rule of holiness. One, it must, for the extent of it, be universal. So we must be holy and be so in all manner of conversation. So it's not, it's not be holy in the church alone. When, when, when you enter the church, you become holy. When you after the church, so, so it, 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 it's more like a, a, a Jesus doing the day voodoo at night. No. No. It has to be Jesus Christ day, Jesus Christ at night. So, so we must be holy and be so in all manner of our conversation, in all civil and religious affairs, in every condition, prosperous or reverse, towards all people, friends and enemies, in all our intercourse and business, still we must be holy. Two, for the pattern of it, we must be holy as God is holy. We must imitate him. Though we can never equal him, he is perfectly, unchangeably, and eternally holy, and we should aspire after such a state. The constitution of the holiness of God should oblige us to the highest degree of holiness we can attain unto. We must aim for it. It is a necessity. It is a condition. So number three said, the written word of God is the surest rule of a Christian's life. The written word of God, which is the word of God, which is the word of the Spirit. So, and by this rule, we are commanded to be holy every way. Number four, the Old Testament commands us, it said that we <clears throat> are to be studied and obeyed in terms of the New Testament. The apostle, by virtue of a command delivered several times by Moses, require holiness in all Christians. We must be holy. So, 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 as obedient children, you be not conforming yourself to the former clause as in your ignorance. Fulfilling God's call to holiness requires that we as obedient children, we must break off the lifestyle of the world, which is characterized by loss and ignorance. And but as he who called you is holy, you also must be holy in your conduct, because it is written, be holy for I am holy. Now the main idea behind holiness is not moral purity alone. But it is the idea of apartness, apartness. That is the, 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 the idea is that God is separate, different from his creation, both in his essential nature and in the perfection of his attributes. So, but instead of building a wall around his apartness, God calls us to come to him and share his apartness. He says to us, be holy for I am holy. How do we separate ourselves? <clears throat> How do we disengage ourselves, not from our fellow brethren, but 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 God is apart. So one is said when we when we when we fail to see God's apartness, we begin to believe that He is just a Superman. Then we don't see that His love is a holy love, His justice <clears throat> is is God's eternal justice for us. So, so what we are, we, are, we, are, we are now saying is that we have to see God the way God sees us. We have to trust God explicitly the way God is to us. So we must never take God for granted. And that is what the writer is, is telling us here, that we must be holy. You see, so, so, so it's the holy justice and so on with all our attributes. Holiness is not so much something we possess. As it is something that we that we possess us. So in this God <clears throat> of the Bible is radically different from the pagan gods commonly worshipped in New Testament times. Hedonism scattered produced a God who ex <clears throat> whose example was not the most uh, abominable but greatest gods. So so now he said, and if you call on the Father. If we as Christians call on him a holy God, presumably for help, we must understand that we call on a God who shows no partiality and we so judge our conduct. This makes a working, sober, holy work 
all the more important. In other words, how can we approach the throne of grace with confidence that whatever we ask, he will give it to us without being holy? How are we to be holy? How do we understand holiness? So, so these are the questions we are asking ourselves tonight. Are, are, are we, are, are, because there are some people, they, they, they mistake holiness to mean no hearings to church. Uh, your garment must be to your, to your, uh, <clears throat> to your uh, near, your, your, um, you must wear your, your, you cannot stand before the congregation without covering your head. You must do this. Are, 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 are this, are this excellent show? So, so how, who can explain to us what we mean by holiness? How can we be holy? Without, without, without going to extreme or being uh, like a, a um, not, 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 not born again Christian, but, 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 but this, uh, uh, I don't know what they call them now. They, they, when you see them, they, they, they don't even put on powder on their face. No makeup, nothing. And, and, and you think something is, uh, somebody died for them. And, and yet nobody died for them. But the, even, even mother of Jesus Mary does not even look uh, so, 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 so bright like them. So, so well, how do you understand holiness? How, do, how, how can Christian be holy without, without being ostentatious or, or without appearing as if to say he is bereaved? How do we understand holiness? Auntie Mary, do you do you think uh, holiness means that you have to dress to church with your with your, with your headgear? You have, you don't have to put on makeup. You have to you don't put on your earring. You don't put on your ornament. You 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 you, 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 you rub your face with oil. So what 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 do you, what, what standard constitute holiness? Uh, how do you, how do you judge holiness? Um, living by the word of God mm -hmm. and being separate, okay. um, try not to, um, not to commit sin. What are, what are, what do you mean by committing sins? Telling lies or? Telling lies, saying things that are not Please, sir. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mary. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Okay. That's right. God is holy. What God cannot do, we should not do it. We should not involve in it. We should be holy. We should be Christ like. God's word says, Jesus says, follow my Christian. That's right. Christ like. Christian means Christ like. Do as Christ do. Study the word of God. Live by the word of God. Everything you are should mm -hmm. be according to God's will and God's word. That's right. And talking about the outward holiness, I have been here. Okay. And that caused me a lot of things. But now I am matured enough. I know how to balance the equation. That's right. And I know what is holiness and what is not holiness. Those bearings and bearing <clears throat> long dresses to sleep the ground. Not holiness. Mm -hmm. All that is just pattern, it's just dress code. Hallelujah, that is dress code. That's right. But holiness, one has, as a Christian, <clears throat> as God was saying earlier, it's not, it is not easy to be holy. But as a Christian, we have to make up our mind. 
Make up your mind that you want to live for God. And if you want to live for God, you have to live by the word of God. Mm-hmm. You should not involve in things that people will say, is this a Christian? Is this such a Christian? No. It is better. Don't do something that will cause somebody to lose faith in the God that we are serving and calling upon. That's right. Because some people do something, they drive people away from they drive people away from the church. These are the things we are talking about. Mm-hmm. Don't do something that will cause somebody else to lose their salvation. Mm-hmm. That's the truth. Amen. 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 I in love with somebody else, husband and wife, all those things mm. are not of God. Mm. They are not of God. That's true. And even if we are not married, mm. a single person, you should find your own husband, marry your own husband. If you don't want to marry, stay as you are. If you, if you think you don't want to marry, then don't go out. Somebody else, husband or wife. Mm-hmm. Because you go to somebody else and wife sharing sex, mm. it's sin, and that is not holy. That's right. You have to make up your mind to be holy. And you start saying to God that, and God will help you. Amen? Amen. 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 Can, um, Thank you, ma'am. Can Pastor, can Pastor Mana explain to us? What the uh, what the, the the writer means by apartness that you, you 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 that God 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 is apart from all of us. So so how can, how can we be apart from 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 one another? Okay, so, I mean, the, the question back to Pauline, I'll come to that. Yes, sir. Really but let's go to the level of apartness. Hmm. So the Bible says, "I am the Lord your God." That's right. That's right. right. Yeah. So this, this, this question about holiness, and I just like um, uh, the business of the Apostle Lucena says, you know, um, it, it, you know, and, and that and that 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 part I read read in the Bible eleven forty five really was the part to the Jewish people were very very familiar with, and that's why when Peter was talking to them, he actually posted that part. You know, that's right. To, you know, Peter wanted to remind them that they have to be holy for God is holy. Okay, and that this holiness. It is a, a process that of course as believers when we conform to God's image and we are obedient to God. That's right. So really it's a process. And that process again to go back, you know, to Romans, the book of Romans says we have to conform, you know, to the things of God, we have to renew our mind. So you renew your mind, you conform to the image of God, and we obey God through the word of God. A couple of weeks ago I got a question from Kamakui. Hmm. It was actually around Easter time, and that's someone right. sent me a question. He says, oh, Pastor, are we holy? All right, that's the question I, I, I got from, from somebody in Kamakwe. Mm-hmm. And I said, Yes, because holiness is not only in a, a possibility for Christians, I will say that again. That's right. Holiness is not only a possibility for Christians, holiness is a requirement. Mm. All right, that's it's right. That's right. Who are doing things or who are doing things that because the moment you are 
align yourself with them. It's very difficult to mature spiritually. Mm. All right? And that's why the New Testament, you know, emphasizes this point that we should pursue holiness in this world. All right? We should pursue it. It didn't say this holiness will pursue us. We have to pursue holiness. That's right. All right? And that takes effort. It takes us being obedient to the things of God. It takes us reading the Word of God. It, 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 you know, it takes us, you know, it's where we have to associate with people who are really, you know, spiritually attuned, mm-hmm. right? And that's what it is about. That's true. We have, we have to pursue holiness. The pursuit of holiness in this world and the final attainment of, of, of holiness in this world to come. So everything we is pursuing holiness. So yes, it is, it is not just, you know, a possibility. It is a requirement that we be holy. So some, some Christians say, oh, we can be holy, we're not God. Yes, we're not God, but it's inherently holy. So we can also be holy. And it's not an outside thing, just like Pastor Luciana said. And I, I remember when she was preaching, she called it the outside, the outward holiness. Mm-hmm. Or outside holiness. Yeah, that's not what God is looking at. Holiness is within, like it's inside. So that's my share on that. So, so it, holiness is not it's not a, a spiritual gift. It, it, it's um, it, it's something you have to develop, isn't it? You've got to work on that. Yes, sir. It's a process. Can can you work on it without without aid, or you have to be assisted? No, you have to. Daddy, I've said it already. Yeah. Ah. So 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 so. It's not easy. All right. We're no. Not it's not easy. All right. Because we are also human beings. So sometimes the flesh wants to kick in. All right. But it's a constant battle. But the more you you you, you I mean, let's take Joseph for example. Joseph could have slept with Potiphar's wife thinking that was the sword that opened for him to go to you know. Okay, that's a good example. Animal. She wasn't going to tell anybody. She was going to keep quiet about it. So how can she go and tell her friends that she left the You know, but but what Joseph demonstrated there was holiness. Because the eyes are God. Nobody was there. So it's not, it's not, somebody doesn't have to be there to be holy. It's between you and God. Uh, so, so, so. so. That one is a very good example because it, it, it sort of answered the question I was going to ask. That um, holy development of holiness is it a collective responsibility on 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 an organization like a church to help one another? But now you you mentioned Joseph, and Joseph didn't have that fellowship with anybody, not church, not his, his brethren. So are we saying that holiness, because Joseph now is a different case. And, and, and but what I'm just trying to find out, it, it, it's uh, can holiness be developed through the assistance or through the collective responsibility of the people you move with? It, say, for example, in the church or, or something like that. Or it is something that you have to personally develop yourself whether whether anybody help you or not. I am shopping fire. Ah to so if you if, if I want to if, if the choice is mine. I can decide who I want to associate with in the church. It's entirely my choice. God has given us a choice. That's right. But if I'm gonna associate myself with somebody in the church who when I finish talking to you I'm confused, I will never call you again. Mm-hmm. If I'm a show with somebody in the church I might speak, and I finish talking I put it down. Mm. I feel discouraged about somebody. I'm not going to call you again. That's right. I refuse to call you because at the end of the day, I have to answer to God, not you. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm very careful who I have to answer. The calls that I made, the people I've called and I talk to, are people I have chosen to talk to. That's right. Because I know when I finish that conversation, I feel elated, and I'm very, very conscious of that. That's right. I'm not going to call somebody who's going to tell me about other people's business. I don't want to hear about other people's business. Because all you're doing is putting the body on me. That's and right. you dump my spirit. Because now you're telling me something about somebody I didn't know. Now I know something about somebody I know that I have to try to be a secret. That's a body. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about Christ. Let's talk about, you know. And that's why there are people like God. 
That's true. So yes, it could be collective, but that choice is yours. Mm -hmm. What do you choose to talk to in the church? That's true. Well, you have to sit yourself out there. How many times do you spend in the Word of God? Mm. Do you make it better for the Word of God? Mm. And those are the questions we ask ourselves as Christians. That's right. I mean, I, I can fool you, all right, but I cannot fool myself. Mm -hmm. I can be saying all these things, but I don't even do it. But God knows, you know, what I'm lying or not. That's right. So at the end of the day, we have to take the reins. We have to be in charge of our mind, because all in the mind, that's mm -hmm. where the devil gets into. That's right. If you don't, if you don't, going back to what we were talking about in the first few chapters, the first verse, the first verse, the first verse, the first verse, which we really elaborate. So much. I'm sure we are all blessed tonight. I am blessed. Yes, I'm more holier now. <laughs> Pastor Luciana, can you bless? Can you see? Can you pray for us tonight? <laughs> Close us in the Can you close the prayer for us, please, Pastor Luciana? Yes, Amen. Let us be. Father, we give you glory. We give you honor. We bless you, God, for this evening, this time of sharing your word, God, and studying your word. Father, we pray, Lord, that as tonight the topic is about holiness, Lord, help us, Lord, to be able to be holy, to be stand. Only left only for your presence, God. Because you said righteousness is joy in the Holy Ghost. Holiness and righteousness give us peace and joy in you, God. Father, help us, Lord, strengthen our faith, strengthen our unbelief, God, and help us, Lord, in this place, so that at the end we'll be called out good and faithful servants. Lord, we appreciate you, Lord Jesus. We cover our lives, our family, and the entire ministry with the blood of Jesus. We give you all the glory and praise, God. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let me share the grace together. Amen. The grace? The grace. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and the love of God. And the love of God. And the simple of the Holy Spirit. Rest with me and abide with us all. Now forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, the goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. And we shall join the house of the Lord. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And amen. Thank you so much.